This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. While airstrikes on Syria were considered inevitable, corporate media brought out the war drums, and we got the kind of coverage you'd unfortunately expect, like this from CNN. Damascus. Well, let's talk about cruise missiles for a minute here. Cruise missiles are extraordinary weapons. They're very reliable. They have pinpoint accuracy. They can carry 1,000-pound warheads, and we might be talking about 100, 200, 300 of them being launched. But then the debate shifted when Barack Obama decided to go to Congress. Not bombing right away didn't sit so well with some pundits. Haven't you handed Syria and Iran at least a temporary victory, sir? CBS host Bob Schieffer offered perhaps the strangest take, though. We have to attack Syria because we said we would. When the President of the United States says something, the rest of the world, our friends and our enemies, pay attention. If we do not follow through, what impact will that have on North Korea or Iran the next time we warn them of dire consequences if they press on with their nuclear weapons programs? More important, how will it be viewed by our strong allies like Japan? We have treaties that promise we will retaliate if they are attacked by nuclear powers. Will they now question our resolve? I don't like anything about where we are, but in a dangerous world, when the United States takes a stand and then goes back on its word, we are left in an even more dangerous place. While some worried about the dangers of not going to war, ABC World News on September 8th offered a different perspective on Syria, how it might affect your 401k. As the president prepares to make his case to the American people, Wall Street already revealing it is not convinced about a U.S. strike. Millions of Americans and their 401ks already feeling this even before any possible action. For starters, it's important to remember that relatively few Americans even have a 401k. But then the big news ABC was reporting doesn't seem like such big news. If you take a look at this, the stock market responding almost immediately where you see on the left hand side of your screen to comments from Putin that Russia would be backing Syria and not the United States, a 150 point drop in the Dow because of that. So you can see, David, how pivotal this week will be as the U.S. makes decisions about what its role will be in Syria. Wall Street will be watching. A huge drop with just word from Putin on Syria. Yes, the market dropped, and then, as ABC's graphic shows, it recovered almost immediately. Of course, there's something inherently problematic about covering world affairs through the lens of the U.S. stock market, and in implying that stocks are a critical source of income for most people. A tiny fraction of Americans have so much money in the market that they watch the Dow's ups and downs every day, but then they may be the audience ABC was aiming for. Finally, the Oneida Indian Nation has produced radio ads for the Washington, D.C. market that call on the NFL to change the name of the Washington Redskins to something that's not an ethnic slur. Team owner Doug Snyder is vehemently opposed to that message, but then it's not his call, right? Except when it is, because Snyder doesn't just own the team, he also owns a radio station. USA Today reports that the senior vice president of the station, WTEM, took one minute to reject the ad, with an email reading, no way, followed by seven exclamation points. So WTEM listeners will not be subjected to the ad's message, which is this. We do not deserve to be called Redskins. We deserve to be treated as what we are, Americans. More proof, if it were needed, that media that are owned by people or companies with other major interests are not really independent news sources making their own decisions. There are a handful of reporters who are choosing not to use the slur in their own coverage, and that's encouraging. But the people who really call the shots have other interests, like the major TV networks who have corporate partnerships with the NFL. For them, the choice between offending Native Americans and offending their partners in money-making seems to be no choice at all. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.